welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today I wanted to take a closer look at Venus. Venus is going to go retrograde as of, now let me be precise, I've got my software up and we're going to have a look together. Uh, how are you by the way? I hope you're well, I hope you're having a good time wherever you are. I have to apologize for being a bit late with this video, I've had a lot going on. Uh, I've been doing a couple of readings this week, I've been doing a lot. I've been, so not just a couple of readings, I've been writing my articles, doing my work, admin, life, catching up with people. Actually yesterday I had a human design session with Sandy Freshy. Hello Sandy if you're watching, thank you so much for what you did for me, it was absolutely amazing. And if anyone's watching, uh, I'll put a link to Sandy below. She does these wonderful human design readings where she basically has a look at your auric field, at your energy, at a map of your energy and she tells you how to make the most of what's going on for you. It's really amazing. So I'll put the link below, do check that out. Uh, what else have I been doing? I've just had a really busy week guys. Um, it's It's been pretty full on so that's why I'm kind of constructing this video as I as I do it. So I'm actually clicking through, let's see because I was looking at the movement of Venus earlier and I went ahead so October 30, let's go back, let's go back, go back, go back. By the way I use Parashara's Light 8.0 in case anyone's wondering on a Mac. Um, so that's what I use. So today is the 5th of October, I'm going to come back to the 5th and I wish I could share my screen so that you guys could see what I'm doing but I will learn how to do that. I, I will, um, that's something that I'm going to learn how to do. There's so many things I'm learning all the time. So because um, I do actually make all this stuff myself, me, you know, I, I do the HTML, I do the pictures, I, I do all this stuff. So let's have a look at um, Venus and I've got an Aries moon uh, ascendant chart open to look at this. So Venus, okay, is in retrograde, went retrograde today. I am a bit late on this video, I am really quite late and I'm probably only going to upload this on the 6th as well. So. Uh, let me have a look, so yep and if I click all the way through November, I mean this is quite an amazing retrograde motion because amazingly she doesn't leave the house at all, she really, Venus really just stays in Libra, she's not going out, sometimes you know they go out of the house when they're doing their little retrograde motion. Uh, and then I'm just going to click through and see, yeah, she's flying forward, 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 all the way through. I mean, the next retrograde we're going to have from Venus is, let's have a look at that. When's the next one going to be? This is interesting. All right, we're looking at about May 2020, if I'm correct. Yep, May 2020 is going to be the next Venus retrograde. So how about we go back, how about we go back, 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 back to 2018, let me, let me get this right, <laughs> uh, definitely got to get this right. All right, September 2018, she's coming to Libra, October, October the 5th, she's gone retrograde and she's going to do this lovely movement just staying within Libra. So what does this mean for all of the different signs? Okay, we are going to take a look at this. Oh, by the way, by the way, another thing I was busy with this week, I shall take a slight detour because I think this is quite fun. I make jewelry like on the side. So this, I made this and I'm making this lovely uh, lapis lazuli. It's quite large. It's turned out to be very bulky. It's the same three strands. I've got three strands here in this turquoise one. Three strands, I've got the 
chain up here and I'm still making it I have to thread the thread through and I've got all my like tools up here and you know all these kind of things a bit of show and tell I just I think we're talking Venus we might as well talk jewelry at the same time uh, but yeah this is so much fun to do guys if you don't have some kind of hobby that you can distract yourself or I don't know just like escape into I love like putting on a you know a talk on astrology or something and and um, using my jewelry tools and making something at the same time it's so much fun but this I mean this is just three strands and one individual strand on eBay costs two pounds seventy five so I love this whole jewelry making thing because I can make nice stuff and I bet I, I'm sure I mean come on doesn't that look kind of expensive I think it does and the whole thing costs like what nine pounds to make so I'm pleased with that but anyway so that was just on my desk so that's why I thought I would take that little detour right there um, but yeah let's get back to Venus okay let's get back to business and I will go through all the signs and I'll do a timestamp for everything so you'll be able to see what's going on for you and really what it's what's going to be ideal is if you take the time to observe it's, it's going to require observation okay so I'm going to tell you some areas to look out at but it's going to require observation to see how it really manifests and that's really the power of astrology learning the language and learning how these energies are manifesting in your life learning what this means for you because we've all got Venus in our charts but how she manifests in our life is a little bit different for everybody and we're here to discover that and learn that and discover and learn okay how does she manifest for us uh, the other things of course to look at with Venus as well I was thinking about this today when I was thinking about how do I want to do this video I normally I do notes and things like that I'm sorry I haven't this is very off the cuff I'm just kind of riffing here today uh, but uh, some of the things I was thinking about today in preparation for the video when I was kind of preparing for it in my mind <laughs> was to also discuss the fact that you know your Venus might be combust your Venus might be debilitated I also wanted to say that if you have any of those things going on please don't be frightened of those words they sound bad combust sounds bad debilitated sounds bad it sounds broken it sounds like there's something wrong with it please don't be frightened of these words uh, it's a judgment to say that any of those things are bad you know I've got debilitations combustions all kinds of things in my charts and none of it puts me off or makes me feel down or makes me worried or it simply makes me want to understand the quality of these things and I'm here to learn okay well what's in my chart and, and how can I work with it best and I remember when I was first beginning in astrology certain words and terms and things would would worry me or freak me out or you go oh no or, oh that's bad but I've since learned that that is that's really not the case at all every single planetary alignment and you know different thing that we've got going it's all beautiful and it's all here to be appreciated and um, you know I think we're kind of here to sort of fall in love with our own chart you know to, to learn it to understand it to see how it operates so when I go through the areas that Venus uh, lords over for you this time we're really we're really going to be observing okay and that's that's what it's going to be about and the other thing that I really love from um, I've got a couple of books out at the moment so I've, I've been having a good old read of my Nakshatra's book uh, by Camilla Sutton this is I always turn to her for um, for Nakshatra's because I was having a look at you know we've got Swati we've got uh, Chitra am I right hang on let's have a look before I bring out the other book we've got Swati we've got which is where she is now Chitra and then we're going to have, I think it's Vishaka Nakshatra. Yeah. So we've got these three lovely nakshatras as well at play. Um, but I think 
more so I'm, I'm going to stick to Libra and the solar thing as opposed to going into nakshatras this time. Sometimes I will. Sometimes I will go more into um, the nakshatras, but I will see. We'll see how we go this time. Uh, but I'm going to be quite solar and a bit mm, high level and general. Okay. And a lot of if you're an astrologer, then this this video probably won't be too exciting for you. You'll know this. But uh, if you'd like to stick around and, and see how I'm interpreting things, you're very welcome to stay. Uh, this is the other book I wanted to mention, Light on Life. This is a really important book in my life. I know that last time in the October video, I think I had some questions around where are you getting your information from and that sort of thing. Light on Life, I brought this one up before. This is an absolutely wonderful book, uh, which I have read and reread and am still reading again. Uh, I keep coming back to this one. It is so beautifully written. And in fact, I really like the nakshatra section in this. I think it's outstanding, even though I'm a big fan of um, Camilla Sutton, of course. But there's also, I mean, a large part of everything I've learned comes from Ernst Wilhelm. So please do check out his website. I'll leave a link to him below as well so that you can uh, go and take a look at um, his school and his work. And I was signed up to that for uh, I think about a year. Um, I think it was at least a year. And his the quality of his teaching is just second to none. It's absolutely outstanding. Uh, I, as part of that school, because I practice sidereal Vedic astrology, that's why I didn't quite um, pipe up too much on the group or I didn't ask to be part of Ernst's, um, uh, he's got a practitioner's list I believe. I didn't particularly uh, want to be promoted necessarily there for the simple reason that uh, I'm very much a sidereal Vedic astrology practitioner and uh, I'm I'm not really into the tropical side of things, which I know um, Ernst is very much on the tropical side of things. And for me, I don't discriminate with either. I love both. I, I think you can get wonderful results from either. Um, so I'm not, I, I have no issue with that. But I, for me, definitely I'm, I'm part of the sidereal camp. So, um, so yeah, so I hope that that's some good information there. And of course, ask me any questions you like uh, in the comments and I'll try my best to respond. So let's have a look at what's going on here with Venus. So just as a general thing, what are we looking at? We're looking at Venus in Libra. So we're looking at, uh, and the other thing I wanted to mention about Venus today was also to say that, and sorry, I'm jumping around. I jump around a lot. Um, I, with, with Venus, I also wanted to say that, look, it's not just relationships. It's not just intimate love relationships. It's also our health. It's also our vitality. It's also self-esteem, self-worth, um, also our energy and our ability to enjoy things. Okay, so how much energy do we have? I've often seen, you know, like a, a really great um, sun and Venus conjunctions in the chart of athletes, for example. Uh, that can be a lovely pairing that, that indicates really good energy. So, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot to think about here. And as we go through the different signs, we'll take a look for everybody. So actually, I think I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm good to start. So let's have a look at um, Aries, Aries Moon. And we're going to do this for Aries Moon or Aries Ascendant. So if you are either Aries Moon or Aries Ascendant, then welcome. Let's take a look at the areas of your life that Venus rules. Okay, so we're looking at the, the, the fields of experience. You know, the houses are often called fields of experience. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been Kay and Rao. See, now I'm tempted to pull out all these books and be looking things up because uh, I think it is important to, to refer to our sources. But I was reading a something or other recently and it did talk about houses as being fields of experience so venus for you aries moon or aries ascendant rules over your second house and your seventh house so what are the areas of life that we're looking at here now obviously venus is transiting through your seventh house libra so that's that's for sure well let's start with that 
what are we looking at there? We're looking at we're looking at contracts. We're looking at marriage, your spouse. Uh, there's a big word that I love for this house, and that is commitment. We're looking at your commitment, you know. And if you think about it, commitment is essential in both business and in relationships. To make either of those two work, you really want to have commitment. It's a pretty essential ingredient. Um, there's a really good business guru that I watch sometimes. He's this Aussie guy. Oh, do you know what? Maybe I'm just going to look it up because Aries, I think you're going to like this guy a lot if you haven't already seen him. Um, why can't I remember his name? This is terrible. I hope I'm going to be able to find it. I'm not very experienced with Facebook and I'm not very good at it. Um, oh, what's his name? Kerwin Ray. Kerwin Ray, guys. This is the guy. Okay, his name's Kerwin Ray and he's this really brilliant um, person who gives advice, coach, all that kind of thing. One of the things he talks about, someone asked him a question about, oh, my, my relationship is going really badly. And he drilled into him a little bit. He asked some probing questions and he kind of found out that, well, your business is probably going nowhere as well. And, you know, that was so perfect what he was talking about because he was kind of saying that, look, you've got to get your relationship going right and you've got to get your business going right. And that's the seventh house, perfectly. I mean, it, 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 it was both for that guy. So that was really, really interesting. And it's not always the case. It's not always the case that, you know, if you're having problems in your relationship, your business will suffer. That, that doesn't always work. Um, But who knows, it'd be interesting to see the astrology of that guy. I would love to have a look at his chart. I'm sure I'd be able to see some interesting things there. But anyway, Aries Moon, uh, that was a little detour, but a little gift potentially. If you haven't seen Kerwin Ray, then do check him out because um, I think his stuff is really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, let's have a look. Let's come back to Libra. We're looking at relationships. We are looking at contracts we're looking at commitment we're looking at significant others we're looking at you know impressing the boss as well uh, your superiors we're looking at that too we're potentially looking at your public and your fame potentially right so um, there's a lot of areas that the seventh house does cover if we have a look at uh, your second house what's going on here so, I mean, this could be this could be a lot of things to do with family. It could be to do with objects, with your actual stuff. Maybe you're going to have a bit of a clear out during this retrograde motion. Maybe you're just going to feel inspired to do a bit of feng shui and just get rid of some things. That would be quite good, actually. Uh, keep only the most beautiful things, only the things that you love. It's that, um, oh gosh, what's her name? That lovely lady. Marie Kondo, Marie Kondo, you could get into a Marie Kondo mode where it's like, you know, does this fill me with love? And if it doesn't, it's got to go. Uh, this could also be, you know, there's food here as well. So it could be something to do with your diet. Maybe you decide to change something about your diet. Maybe you're going to look at that more closely and make some changes there. So Aries Moon or Aries Ascendant hope you enjoyed that little look into the fields of experience and basically what I'd want you to do is observe observe those areas of your life and see what happens and that will be we're looking until let me tell you when it's until the start of the year so that's until January the 1st okay yeah December yeah the 31st that's really the 1st of Jan. So have a look. Have a look from now. It's a long period that this, this area of your life is in focus. So see what happens and report back. You're very welcome to come back to the comments and um, tell me how it went. So thank you for joining Aries, Moon, Aries Ascendant. 
we are now going to welcome Taurus, Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant. I'm so sorry, the camera just stopped. And you know what? That's really given me a bit of a wake up call. It's saying move quickly because I'm talking too much and I'm talking too slowly. So we're going to be really efficient. We're going to fly through this uh, and we're going to take a look at the areas that Venus lords over in your chart. So Venus, of course, rules your ascendant, rules your ascendant. And we're also looking at the sixth house. Okay, so uh, Venus in the sixth house, Venus, as we all know, I think Venus not uh, the happiest in, in the sixth house, but if you have different experiences, please do tell me. Please do let me know how, how Venus works for you in that sixth house. Uh, let's take a look. In that sixth house, we've got Libra here. Um, what are we really looking at? I mean, I think in terms of the areas of your life that you want to be looking at and observing, uh, and that's from now until January the 1st of this year. And if you watch the intro bit, you would have seen that, you know, the next um, Venus retrograde is going to happen, I think, in 2020. So, uh, you know, this, this is this is important, this, this, this time from now until January of 2019, January the 1st. So the areas of life that you want to be observing are your, do you know, I'm going to say your health actually, because it's your ascendant and the ascendant does, um, you know, the stars that are there and our ascendant and all of that, it really does create the physical body. So we're definitely dealing with the physical body for you uh, in the ascendant anyway. And sixth house definitely is health. It's, um, you know, it's illness, it's foreign bodies, foreign bodies. So that's, that's enemies as well. Enemies, it's, it's such an archaic term, you know, but like enemies could be, um, I mean, it's just people around you that, 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 you know, uh, tend to get in your way or, or people at work. If, if, they're, if you're in a competitive sort of a situation, you know, um, enemies there. There's, of course, also uh, legal disputes are here as well. You know, the law, all that kind of thing. I tend to think that um, the sixth house is very much about people who they actually like figuring out where to draw the line. These are the people who want to devote their, their consciousness and their analytical mind to figuring out, well, where do we draw the line? Hence the judicial system and all that kind of thing. So Taurus, I think, uh, Taurus moon, Taurus ascendant, you know, this is going to be a time really of your physical health. It's also, we're looking at the ascendant, this is also going to be your, um, as I said in the intro, your self-esteem, your sense of self-worth your sense of um, how you feel about yourself. And that's so fundamental to all kinds of personal development work. So really, you know, I think this is, um, this is going to be a really important time for you and a chance to make progress on things like your, um, your fitness, your well-being, your outlook on life, how you feel about yourself. This is a really good time for you to to work with Venus I think and to step things up to take things somewhere you know I, I think this is this could be a really good time for you so observe these areas in your life get back to me come on this video let me know how it goes for you um, I'd absolutely love to hear how how things go for you Taurus moon Taurus ascendant so thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Gemini moon, Gemini moon or Gemini ascendant either. Uh, welcome. We're going to take a look at the areas that Venus rules in, in your chart. Uh, so let's have a look here. So we've got Venus in your fifth house, fifth house and your twelfth house. Okay, so what are we looking at for you? We are looking at, so what fields of life okay so I'm not really talking too much about the transit 
I'm not going to go into the transit, I'm just looking at the houses here. And we're just going to look at the, the fields of experience, I should say. Uh, the fields of experience, that's what houses represent. So if we're looking at the fifth house, we are looking at quite a lot of things actually. We're looking at um, creativity, your creative self-expression. We're looking at children. We're looking at... We're even looking at entertainment, you know. We're looking at things like acting and being on stage and and being on camera even. Uh, we're looking at, um, what other things are we looking at here? We're also looking at, you know, even ancient texts and uh, self-teaching. This is a lot of self-taught people come from this, this part of the zodiac, the fifth house. Uh, so there's a tremendous ability to self, to teach yourself things. You know, you don't need to go to school. You can you can teach yourself. It's terrific. Uh, so maybe there are some new skills that you're going to pick up in in that area. Um, so for this video, I'm really asking people to, you know, hear the fields of life, fields of experience that I'm going through here, and then really observe those from now until January the 1st. January the 1st, Venus is going to move into Scorpio. Things are going to get different. So... You've got a lot of time with Venus here, and this is really good uh, because Venus is such a beautiful energy, and you can do a lot with Venus. Now, and Venus, of course, is our enjoyment. You know, um, as I said in the introduction, it is our self-esteem, self-worth, all of these kind of things. And I mean, we're, we're looking at the 12th house here, and maybe some of that comes into this area for you. So the 12th house, Venus rules your 12th house as well. So what are we looking at here? We are looking at, well, we're looking at escapism, I suppose, aren't we? We're looking at, um, could even be travel, could even be that you're going on some kind of spiritual trip, you're going on some little getaway, you're treating yourself to some sort of uh, luxurious, lavish getaway, wouldn't that be nice? Um, the Twelfth house is also, it's where we, we lose, say we lose money, but we gain something. So it is, it's not quite the house of gains, which is next door, which is the 11th house, which is just the pure gains, easy gains, um, hoops, dreams and wishes sort of gains. But uh, the 12th house is you lose something, but you gain something. So this period of time could have you... Um, I don't know, maybe you're spending money, but you're gaining something beautiful that, that, that you absolutely love, that, you know, transports you somewhere else. Or, um, and sometimes that can be things, amazingly. You know, sometimes it can be, it can be found through things that we, um, we buy, isn't it? It's a really interesting one. Taurus in the 12th house. Very interesting. So I'd love to hear back from you, Gemini Moon or Gemini Ascendant. I'm trying to think what other things we've got going on there. I mean, the 12th house is also uh, your spirituality. It's, it's, you know, I mean, there's so much in all of these houses, but spirituality, no bounds, no, no boundaries at all. You know, it's kind of, um, I do often see, when I think about the 12th house, I kind of see like, you know, there are different parts in the chart where we have water. And for me, the 12th house is you're in water, you can't see any land, and you know, you know that there's a bottom, but you, you can't feel it kind of thing. Whereas when I think about Scorpio water, I think about, you know, Still waters run so deep that you don't know where the bottom is and that's kind of scary. I think of like a deep lagoon there uh, in a rainforest or something. And then when we've got cans, you know, I, I tend to think yeah, there's water but you can see the land. So it's interesting. But no bounds. No bounds up here. Hmm. I hope it's not unlimited spending. <laughs> You might want to rein in the spending. I don't know. It'll be interesting, but do get back and let me know um, 
how you get on with these these different areas so we are looking as i said the fifth house there libra and that, i mean look that's also creativity in relationships as well isn't it there's so much but i really must move on to the next one thank you so much gemini i mean i could keep talking i could i mean we could sit here for an hour and, and just talk this but uh but i really got to be disciplined and move on so cancer moon Cancer Moon, Cancer Ascendant, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. We are going to have a little look at your, at the areas that Venus lords over in your chart. So for you, we've got the fourth house here and we've got the um, 11th house. And I'm not going to be looking at the transit as such. I really want to look at just these areas and just talk about the areas of life that Venus lords over. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to look at how Venus impacts these areas. So we're looking at from now until January the 1st, 2019. Okay, Venus is going to be affecting these areas. Her energy is going to be affecting these areas. These areas are going to be more in focus in your life. So what areas are we looking at? We are looking at the fourth house where Venus is transiting through. And I mean, look, that can be really nice, I think, isn't it? Um, oh, I really do want to bring up that transit chart that I have. doesn't matter. We, we, won't, we won't talk about transit. We'll talk about the area that's here. So we've got uh, your home environment. We've got family. We've got, you know, mum how your relationship is with your mum how's mum doing um what else are we looking at here it is pleasure it's it's conveniences it's things that um that kind of feel good family times being with the family home uh mother this is a really nice area of the chart so Venus could be impacting these kind of things. Your vehicles as well, property, land, that's also here. And then when we look at the 11th house, we've got, these are two kind of social sort of areas. So, I mean, the 11th house is very social. The 11th house is groups, it's friends, it's network circle, it's hopes, dreams, and wishes. It's um, easy gains, you know, put in a little bit of effort, get a lot of gains. It's a terrific area. Uh, mind you, I mean, it is Aquarius, and Aquarius has a huge amount of understanding for when you don't have um, and now if you watch my song series dedication to Aquarius you'll see there I talk about um, you know the depths of, of Aquarius that it's not just kind of easy hopes dreams and wishes you know Aquarius has the consciousness to take into account the homeless person on the street who's hoping and dreaming and wishing for a bed that night you know I mean hopes dreams and wishes is a very big term and it doesn't just mean um, you know, getting a, a flight uh, to a, a holiday destination or something like that. You know, it's, it's not that kind of hopes, dreams and wishes is pretty big. Um, but how would, this, how would this apply to you, Cancer Moon? It's really interesting. I mean, you, your network circle, um, could this be a time that you grow your professional network circle, for example. Um, could this be a time? I mean, I, I think you could be more focused at home, needed more at home possibly, if your Venus is very strong and a very strong influence in your chart and in your life, um, then that, that could be the case, that you're needed more at home and that your professional network circle uh, will will expand or something along those lines. So a few things to think about there. Also trying to think what else is Aquarius. Hmm. It's so much, but in the context of Venus. Do you know I think it's I think it could also just be having a good time with friends. Maybe this is a, a chance for you to have some good times with some friends, you know. 
Um, but if you can observe these areas of your life and have a look and see how this plays out, then that would be great. And please do come back and let me know um, if you'd like to, to say what you've observed and how these transits play out for you. I'd love to know. So thanks so much for joining Cancer Moon. We're now going to welcome Leo Moon or Leo Ascendant. Welcome. Welcome Leo Moon, Leo Ascendant. We're just going to take a look at the areas of your life, of your chart, that Venus rules. So Venus rules, I'm not really looking at the transit, I'm not making a prediction about what's going to happen for you or any of that. We're just looking at the areas that um, Venus governs. And as I say, if you're an astrologer or something like that, you would know all this already. But this is for those of you uh, who don't know and who would like to know what areas Venus will be impacting as she makes her big transit. So she's going to be in the same area of Libra um, until January the 1st, 2019. Now what areas is she going to be impacting? Well for start she's going to be impacting your third house. Third house we're looking at your courage, we're looking at uh, media, we're looking at you know Writing and communications as well, sure, I don't see why not. A lot of great salespeople come from the third house. Um, but it's your courage, it's your effort, it's your willpower. Uh, you know, it's, it's the effort you put into things. Uh, there's a lot here, really. Um, younger siblings as well. Siblings, friends. I, I, do, I see friends from here in people's lives. Um, I've seen people who have Venus in here, yeah, and they meet their partner uh, at a, some kind of small club or something like that. I've seen that happen. So it's a really nice area of the chart, actually. Uh, it's also business. Yeah, business, media, sales, these kind of things. Definitely. So that area of your life, and we're looking at the 10th house, which is, well, now that is definitely business. That is all business. Uh, so Leo Moon is quite a business time for you, actually. So, yeah, I've got my fingers crossed that you're able to make a lot out of this transit. Um, so your career, career, fame, honours, spotlight, being on the world stage, uh, being in charge, being a leader. These areas of your life are kind of being lit up here by Venus. So observe these areas of your life, see how it's going to impact you. Come back to the video if you want to um, tell me how these things are impacting you. I'd love to know. So I know it's been brief, but uh, anyway, I could talk and talk and talk. <laughs> I've had all these different ones. I've got a, many of these to get on with. So Thank you for joining and we're going to welcome Virgo Moon, Virgo Moon, Virgo Moon, Virgo Ascendant, welcome. Thank you for joining. Now we're going to take a look at the areas of life that Venus lords over in your chart. What I've been asking all the different signs to do is to take a look at how this is going to impact these areas of life. So I'm actually not saying anything. I'm not talking about transits. I'm not predicting and saying this is what it's going to be like. All I'm doing here is I'm just stating the areas that Venus energy will impact. Okay, so these are areas for you to observe from now until the 1st of January 2019. So uh, we're really taking a look at your second house where Venus is transiting. And your ninth house. Okay, so we've got um, we've got family here. This is kind of family, family childhood, but it's your it's your family home. It's your savings. It's um, objects, things, your stuff. Uh, it's also food. Food. Maybe you're going to change your diet. Maybe if you've been thinking about going vegan, you might actually try it out. Um, I know me. I, I've kind of experimented with a lot of all these things, and I'm I'm kind of vegan-ish. Like I, yeah, I do the vegan thing sometimes. I mean, at home, so I don't buy any milk. 
Um, I don't do milk, eggs, dairy, none of that. Uh, but then when I'm out, you know, I eat whatever's out. And sometimes I might even have some meat or something or, you know. But for me, I kind of know that if planes stop flying around and food stopped being flown everywhere and we had to make some big changes and we had to be seasonal and local and vegan, I could do it. So that's where I am on that. But I don't, I'm not strict on anything. Um, but that's one example of me. There we go. So let's get back to your chart, Virgo Moon. Uh, ninth house, how cool. So this is, we're looking at um, long distance travel. We're looking at how you are with your beliefs, man-made systems of thought, beliefs, religion, uh, your studies, academia. Um, this could be a really, really, really good time to review your beliefs, actually, and particularly around how you feel about yourself in regards to something like your childhood. God, that would be amazing. I mean, I'm just making this connection right now because you've got a second house, you've got a ninth house there. That is super cool. There's a lot you can do with this Venus energy. Um, oh, I really like that for you. Wow, how cool. But I'll let you extract meanings and ideas and I, I'm not going to, this is just a very light touch thing I'm doing today. In fact, it's so light touch, I'm going to get on to the next one. Uh, Libra, Libra Moon, Libra Moon, Libra Ascendant, thank you so much for joining. Welcome. I'm sorry I'm going so quickly. I feel like I need to apologize to every sign. I'm just going flying through these. Um, let's see, how are we doing for time, by the way? We're not going... Oh gosh, the camera's going to pass out any minute. Um, what are we looking at here? We're looking at, okay, we're looking at your first house and the eighth house. So we're looking at your, as I said in the introduction, we're looking at your confidence. We're looking at your self-esteem. We're looking at your self-worth. We're looking at you. We're looking at your physical body, how you feel. What's your energy like? Um, this is the area of life definitely being affected for you, uh, which is you, all of you. And um, we're also looking at the eighth house. So this could be in-laws, this could be other people's money, other people's resources, other people's assistance, um, how other people assist you, you know. These are certain things that could be in focus. We're also, I mean, that's the eighth house. We're looking at transformation. We're looking at, and this could be, I mean, look at this. Look at the connection here. This could be a really transformative time for you, for your entire self-image, for who you are. This could be um, quite a lot of things, actually. Uh, but, yeah, I, I won't do too much analysis. I will allow it for you to do the analysis, but um, these are really interesting areas of life to be thinking about and to be reflecting on and to seeing how this Venus energy works uh, for that period of time. So I'm going to scoot on to the next one because I'm low on time. So thank you, Libra. Uh, hi, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Ascendant. So sorry, but the camera just cut. So I'm really going to have to go quickly because I think the whole thing is going to collapse in a few minutes. So we're really going to have to speed through. Um, I think where I got to with you, actually, do you know, I'm going to start from the beginning because uh, I think I'll just cut the old one and I'll, we'll start from you. So what are we looking at? We're looking at Venus and the areas in your chart that Venus rules or Venus is the Lord of. And what I'm asking every sign to do is to really observe from now until the start of, so January the 1st, 2019, that's when Venus is going to be in affecting these areas for you. So really observe these areas and see what happens. And of course, come back to this video and report back. Or if you already know how this transit plays out for you, please let me know. Or whatever it is, feel free to just write in the comments. 
um, anything you like there. So, because uh, I know some of you, in last month, October, people were writing, oh, I know this transit, this is how it feels. So um, please do let me know. So on this occasion, I'm not going to be imposing or saying that this will happen or that will happen. What I'm doing is I'm going to tell you the area that Venus rules and lords over and then it's for you to observe and draw some conclusions and you know you can be creative with the meanings here and we might do some a little bit of that here so I was just looking and I saw that okay for you it's the 12th house and it's the 7th house and you've got the 12th house here and you've got Libra and I mean that could be how you as a soul relate to other people soul to soul right so, so that's one of the ways that we can look at this um, the twelfth house is your spiritual self. It's your soul. It's your unboundedness. It's your essence. It's who you are. Um, it's also an area where you lose something but you gain, right? So you're losing but you're gaining something. You know, it's it's um, it's really interesting. It's different to the gains that you get in the eleventh house. The eleventh house is just stuff you get stuff you get hopes dreams wishes easy money you know it, it, stuff comes in whereas this is it's losses but you are gaining something it's not just a pure loss uh, so it's it's really interesting uh, it's, so it's your spirituality it's can be a place of expenses or losses but you will gain something uh, what else is going on here spirituality escapism addictions you know maybe you're addicted to relationships I don't know uh you know maybe Venus will be checking that out for you I, I'm not sure but that could be one meaning that you could draw from this I mean we can get really creative with astrology and the meanings and the interpretations and all that kind of thing so um so yeah it's really really interesting now the other part of your chart is your relationships so it is the seventh house of your relationships it's uh, contracts in business it is business the merchant sort of side of your life um, it's commitment commitment is an absolutely fundamental word here and when I was dealing with Aries I brought up the example of Kerwin Ray now he's a brilliant life coach do check him out if you ever get the chance but I was once once watching him, somebody had asked him some questions. I think they said their relationship wasn't going well. He said, yeah, I bet your business isn't going well either. And for that particular person, that was the case. And that astrologically made sense to me because marriage and business, contracts, you know, that kind of structured way of uh, people working together, that is all in the seventh house. So yeah, that made a lot of sense. So for you, it's your seventh house and it's your twelfth house. The twelfth house, I mean, spirituality, escapism, losses, uh, time on your own. Could be time on your own. You know, there's lots of different meanings. I mean, we could talk for an hour just about this. But I really must crack on because the camera will collapse. So thank you, Scorpio Moon, for being here, Scorpio Ascendant. And we're going to welcome Sagittarius Moon, Sagittarius Ascendant. Sagittarius, welcome. Now, we're going to have a look at the areas of your life that Venus rules over in your chart. And as I've been saying for all signs, I'm not going to be making any predictions or talking transits or any of that. I'm just going to be pointing out the areas of life that I'd like you to look at from now until the 1st of January 2019. So have a look at how these areas manifest in your life and, and see what happens. So the areas of life are um, 11th house of friends, network circle, uh, hopes, dreams and wishes. It's kind of easy gains, um, promotions. There's a lot here in the 11th house. It's a lot more than just that. Um, but that's some of it. That's some of the story. We've also got the sixth house here. So the sixth house is, um, I mean, the sixth house is lots of things, but it's kind of wanting to say foreign bodies. So, you know, if you think about it, that could be bacteria, so that could be getting an illness, but it could also be foreign bodies as in 
you're in court, you know, battling a, a case or something. Um, and I'm not saying you're going to be in court. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that these are the different areas. These are different things that, that, that happen in this house. Uh, sixth house is also career. It's also work. It's also our service, our service in the world. So definitely if you're a service-based professional, you know, if you're a lawyer or if you're a consultant or if you're a, um, definitely if you're a naturopath or if you're a Bach flower healer or if you're a, um, you know, any of these kind of things also fit, fit in there. I know a guy who, um, he runs a meditation uh, business. He, he's going to start a meditation business. He does Reiki, he does, but he works, I think he works in a professional environment um, doing these kind of things, uh, like at a, some kind of physio clinic or something like that. He's got an office there. Um, and he does all that kind of thing. He's got a lot of sixth house activity. Uh, so, yeah, so we are looking at, so your work in the world, your career, your service, um, could be to do with your health, aspects of your health. Uh, and it could also be, so that's the sixth house, and that could also be 11th house, which is your professional network circles, your friends, older siblings. Um, what else is going on here? Could be tied in with work as well. And it's on that 5.11 axis of, you know, gains. I mean, that's kind of stock market and things like that. But stock market is really fifth house, but I mean, because they're connected, you know. Interesting. Interesting thing to, uh, to have a look at Sagittarius Moon. So Sagittarius Moon or Ascendant, Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I really have to crack on because the camera is about to collapse. So Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Ascendant, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to have a look at the areas of life that uh, Venus rules over in your chart. And what I've been saying to all the different signs is that, look, I'm not making predictions here. We're not looking at the transit. I'm just saying the areas of your chart that are kind of lit up the you know field of experience I think that's what a house is technically it's a field of experience so we're going to be looking at the areas of your life that Venus lords over and what I'm asking every sign to do is really to look at these areas of your life and from now until January the 1st 2019 this is the time that Venus will be in these areas affecting these areas and uh, have a look see what happens see if these areas are more in focus uh, and come back to this video, of course, and, and leave your comment if you'd like to say how it goes. So we're looking at, for you, we're looking at the 10th house. Venus is in the 10th house, 10th house of career, fame, honours. Career, fame, honours, spotlight, um, the world scene, uh, work, you know, like, I want to say governance, but it's kind of like corporate governance, really. It's kind of more corporations, I would think. Uh, as opposed to government, which is government can be more fifth house politics, that kind of thing. Um, but we're looking at the 10th house here and it's, it's you stepping up and being a leader. It's you taking charge, um, possibly, or, you know, having more prominence in the workplace, uh, for example. And we're also looking at your fifth house. Fifth house. Okay, so that is that could be that could be politics, couldn't it? Politics, government, that kind of thing. But fifth house is very much your creative self-expression, your creativity in the world, uh, your children. Um, what other things have we got going on here? It can be, I mean, entertainment. It's fun. It's uh, it's Leo. It's party time. You know, it's. <laughs> It's the fifth house, Leo, um, all that kind of thing. Yeah, sun always has a good time here. Maybe your energy will be something to focus on, actually, if we are looking at the sun as well. But these are basically the areas. So I am going to crack on Capricorn Moon, uh, I hope, or Capricorn Ascendant. I hope that that has been just a nice little check-in for you to see um, the areas 
So fifth house, tenth house. These are the areas. Okay, I'm going to move on to Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Ascendant. Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Ascendant. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we are going to scoot through. Um, I'm going to go quite quickly because the camera has been really playing up. So I want to do this before the camera crashes. Uh, what are the areas that Venus rules for you? Now Venus rules your ninth house and your fourth house. Okay, so this is quite interesting. Uh, these are the areas. So basically for every sign, what I'm saying is have a look at these areas in your life and see, you know, are these a bit more in focus from now until January the 1st, 2019. I'm not making any predictions here. I'm not talking about transits. I'm not doing any of that. We're just looking at the areas. I'm just covering the areas that Venus rules over. So we're really looking at ninth house, which is long distance travel. It's your beliefs, really. It's kind of um, man-made systems of thought, you know. This could be a really good time for you to reinvent your beliefs and or, you know, uh, focus more on new beliefs or creating new belief systems or, you know, looking at your life and saying, do you know what, I'm tired of this. I want to create a whole new belief system. Maybe you might want to do that. Maybe, And, I mean, that could be in relation to your relationships, sure, because we've got Libra here. So... Um, yeah, I mean, how this could be about your conditioning to do with your relationships uh, because conditioning is beliefs, right? So we really could be looking at, yeah, how you've been conditioned when it comes to beliefs because it's Libra. And definitely, I mean, especially a relationship with father could come in here. And we've also got a fourth house, which is relationship with mum. And we're looking at family life here. So family life could be a lot more prominent for you at this time. Family, home, fourth house, fourth house of home, vehicles, property. Uh, these things could all be in focus quite a bit uh, at this time. So I could talk for another hour, Aquarius moon, Aquarius ascendant. I could keep going, but I'm not going to because I really have to get to Pisces moon because the camera might drop <laughs> out at any moment. So Pisces Moon, Pisces Moon, Pisces Ascendant, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I just feel so relieved that the camera hasn't passed out because I'm telling you, it's about to pass out. I just know it. So we're gonna rush through. We're gonna go really quickly. Venus is ruling your, hang on a minute. Everything's starting to go a bit skew. Eighth house. And third house. Okay, that's quite cool. Uh, and we're going to take a look at these areas. So I'm not making any predictions here. I'm not. We're not looking at transits and such. I'm just. We're just looking at the areas of life that are lit up, and that that Venus energy could be um, impacting. Now Venus is going to be doing her transit. She's going to be uh, in Libra until the first of January 2019. So, um, so. Have a look at these areas in your life. See, see what happens. See if, if these are more in focus. So we're looking at your in-laws, your relationship with your in-laws. Um, we're looking at, uh, what else are we looking at? Other people's money, other people's resources. We're looking at anything to do with the occult. Uh, so who knows, maybe you might start a business doing your passion at this time we are also looking at transformation personal transformation and this transformation could really have something to do with your courage with your ability to sell yourself a third house we're looking at here we're looking at sales we're looking at media we're looking at communication we're looking at even business um, we're looking at willpower uh, so definitely we are looking, I would say definitely things, anything around self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth for sure. Absolutely. With this setup. Yep. Yeah. This could be an amazing time. Third house is younger siblings. It's friends. It's, um, it's a lot of things, but the eighth house is super cool and there could be some transformation, especially when it comes to your relationships and even your relationship with your significant other as well. So Pisces moon, Pisces ascendant, 
that's a lot to look forward to and um I just want to thank you so much for, for stopping by and for watching this video. Thank you so much for all the comments, guys, as well. How are we doing on time here? Yes, it's just about to pass out. <laughs> um, thank you so much for all your comments. Thank you, everybody who puts a little thumbs up on my video. It makes me so happy. It makes this really worthwhile doing. I love doing this work and I love hearing from you. I love getting the little thumbs up every now and then. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. So, well, I'm sure there'll be something else happening in the sky and you'll see me again soon. And hopefully I get to do some of the other videos I have planned. I have so many videos planned, um, some fun stuff. Where I, you know, I've got charts of famous people up on my wall and things that I want to do. And so there's a lot more coming. So please stay tuned and I'll see you next time.